Hola, says John. It's working. It's working. Nick Cusick. Hello, it's working. I'm live. Hey, it's on live. Steve Oates, good to see you. Uh, I, I, you might be. I might be live. There's been some issues with Zoom and um, with, uh, with broadcasting and with Facebook at the moment. I think it's a, a little bit of a case of it, it being a bit overloaded with the number of people wanting to do uh, live streams, a number of people doing events and live streams and conferencing and all that kind of stuff at the moment. Uh, we are one of many that are doing live streams, but the thing is we've been doing them for more than a year, but of course everyone's doing them now. So it's just very cool. Uh, the more the merrier, I say, because it's it all come down to the fact that, uh, you know, <laughs> hold on, you don't look like Matt Bailey. I do look like Matt Bailey. I haven't changed. It's only yesterday. Okay, Hayden Dare, Steve, Zeno, Rob Akers, Nick Huzek. Uh, very much appreciated. Um, Spelling less so. <laughs> I'm, I probably, is there a spelling error somewhere? I'll have to fix that. Okay. What tonight is all about is, as per the plan that you would have seen at the beginning of the week, it's a cocktail crash, uh, crash test, I'm going to call it. Cocktail crash test. I do not make cocktails. Let me, let me stress that. I don't regularly make cocktails. I like making nice cocktails if we have guests around, if there's people around, if there's friends coming around kind of thing. Um, otherwise... Um, I don't regularly make cocktails for myself at home. I know some people do, and so therefore they have a much more elaborate setup and they know what they're doing. Um, second point I'm gonna make about tonight, this crash test. It's a crash test. Something will probably invariably go, uh, go wrong. Uh, so what the idea about tonight's test, the cocktail crash test idea is for me to say to you the second point, which is I am not a bartender. I can count on two hands the number of times I've played the role of bartender. And I mean, two hands like, maximum 10 times uh, and that would be things like pop-up bars that we've done with the likes of Archie Rose that we've done around the country with different bars of uh, 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 superstar appearances I've done with um, other bars other partner bars of ours around the country which have been a lot of fun um, so I've got some uh, the idea about tonight is for me to say that one I don't regularly make cocktails two I don't I'm not a bartender three I'm not a trained mixologist. I'm trained in other things, not in uh, making of cocktails. So, but I've got two cocktails I want to make tonight and I'm going to make one as a half serve because it's the first one. And then I'm going to make the second one as a full serve. And uh, I'll tell you a bit about each one a little bit and we'll go from there. The idea as well is something that we established uh, with Cocktail Co actually a number of years ago, um, many years ago now, was about whole, the whole sort of premise of um, if chefs use the best ingredients to make food, why not use the best ingredients to make a cocktail? Now, I don't have the best ingredients on hand, but the whole idea about tonight is about, I'm, I'm drawing upon things which are, um, I'm drawing upon things which I've got inside my house. So this is COVID-19 isolation cocktail hour, where you can pull things from your house that you've got to make interesting drinks. Uh, and if you don't have some of these things, that's okay. You can, there's substitutes you can use, I'll make mention of. Uh, otherwise you can pick up most of these things at Dan Murphy's, which are still open. Um, you know, things like that for syrups and things like that. You know, now I'm going to start by showing you some of the things I've got in front of me. I've got two glasses. Again, I don't have a, I don't have a big list of cocktail, nice cocktail martini glasses and things like that. I've got a Habiki glass that came free and a Drambuie tumbler. So I've got those two glasses. I've got a wooden muddler here for muddling things. I don't think I actually need that tonight. I've got an assortment of citrus. Uh, I'm going to be taking your questions as well as we go. I've got a pourer. I've got a, uh, uh, sorry, I've got a, a jigger and I've got a pourer. Uh, I've got a, a, a nice little uh, gold plated mixing spoon, courtesy of our friends over at William Grant and Sons from some, something we did with them once upon a time. Uh, I've got a peeler. Uh, there you go. It's a peeler that you can get. I've got a shaker and, and Hawthorne strainer. This is, I understand most people won't have sh shakers and strainers. So again, there's ways around this. Yikes. I told you I don't know what I'm doing. Stay. Um, I've got a knife or a sharp knife. So I hope I don't cut myself. I've got a, a nice waiter's friend. I don't know why that's here. I've got a simple syrup and a grenadine syrup. You might, these are some things, some things you might not always have on hand, but are helpful to have. I've got some soda water. I've got some lemon juice. I've got some, of course, a bottle of bitters. Uh, I've got ice. I've got tonic water. I've got a few different tonics, a fever tree uh, and a Fentimans. 
Fentiman, I like Fentimans. And it's it's kind of like the the underdog of the tonic world if you're making gin-based cocktails. I'm not gonna do a gin-based cocktail tonight though. Change my mind. So but I like Fentimans. I think it's a great tonic. Um, it's a very aromatic tonic, so it might overpower some of the lighter gins. But if you've got quite a juniper robust gin, uh, or even like a barrel aged gin, like a, an old Tom style gin, something like that might be nice. Anyway, I'm going off tar target here. Um, where's the simple syrup? Who's got a simple syrup? I've got the simple syrup. There you go. Every, if, if you've got one little thing to mix with, I'd say it's lemon juice and simple syrup go really well in different, different cocktails. Juggle, juggle, juggle. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I've, I've already, I've already, um, I've already knocked things over. So like, I, like I've just shown you a very, very simple setup for making cocktails at home. Now, normally I'd also like to have things like nice clear cut ice, um, uh, different, different things, but this is definitely isolation cocktail time. If I have, if you haven't got clear cut ice, if you haven't got, and if the idea is as well, I like to drink cocktails at bars. So I like to be at a bar or a restaurant or something drinking a cocktail. I, that's why I don't make them at home. It's, it's very much about the experience of being out. You can't go out at the moment. I encourage everyone to stay home. As you've seen, the curve is starting to flatten, but it's all about taking the time to get there. And the faster we eliminate this, the faster we can all get back on with our normality of lives, uh, going out and, and socializing. <laughs> but I'll still be doing videos, don't worry. <laughs> Emma Gilligan makes it a, a very, uh, a very uh, uh, obscure reference there, of course. Whose shoe is that, she says, from Robbie. Uh, Robbie, uh, whose shoe is that? Yes, that's from a Berniston. Um, love, great TV show. Great, very funny. Okay. So I've got two cocktails I'm going to start with. Uh, well, I'm going to start with. I'm going to start with and finish with two. But I'm going to take your questions on our Facebook group along the way. Let's just get this out of the way nice and quickly. Facebook group, SMWS uh, Australia Facebook group uh, is where I'm going to be taking the questions from. If you're watching this on YouTube right now or if you're watching this on our Facebook page, I can probably grab some questions, but really... The, um, the group would be the best one to go to. I am just going to bring up, however, um, our page, just in case I'm going to miss, I don't want to miss any, anything going on over there, of course, as well. Uh, okay. Here, here we are. Okay, well, I can't really see, see it anyway, so that's all right. Okay, so I'm going to go back into where I was. Fantastic. Okay, so let's, let's do some at-home cocktails. Uh, the record tonight is Tom Waits, Real Gone, great album. Uh, in fact, it was his first album without any keys. <clears throat> Of course, I got some of the, uh, the diehard fans a bit upset. Uh, no keyboards on a Tom Waits album. I think it's a great album anyway. <coughs> Pardon me. I swallowed funny. I do not have the virus. Okay, here we go. I'm going to start with the Phil Collins. Now, this is a bit of a um, the Hawthorne cocktail turn on its head kind of thing. It was sort of a piss take cocktail that was um, uh, made for Phil Collins, the lead singer of Genesis, um, as sort of like his cocktail. And there's even a Phil Collins day in the United States. I don't remember which day of the year it is. It's like, I think it's April or March. So we're in April. So um, I'm going to pretend today is Phil Collins day here for us in Australia. Hey, hey, says Nico. Good to see you. Liam Smith, good to see you. Finish with a shoey. <laughs> Chow Tran. Chow. Do not watch this, Chow. You'll realize how little I know what I'm doing here. <laughs> Whiskey Sours with SMWS 33 is yummy. I have no doubt. I, I, taught, I debated doing a sour or a penicillin tonight because... Uh, uh, old fashions have been done to death, and I think whiskey sours are one, whiskey sours are some of my favourite cocktails. But I didn't want to. This is about keeping it simple. This is what you can do at home. If you're using good ingredients at home to make simple cocktails, it can be bliss, and that's what tonight is all about. Um, <laughs> I love you too, Chow. You're fantastic, and I've been following everything you're doing. By the way, Chow's from Burrow Bar. Always good to support the bars. They're all doing it tough at the moment. They're all closed at the moment. It's ridiculous. So uh, check out what, if you've got a local bar that you love going to, if there's a bar you've always loved, always check out what they're doing because some of them are doing whiskey packs. Some of them are doing home delivery cocktails. Some of them are doing all sorts of things. And they'll deliver cocktails that taste far better than what I'm probably going to create now. So I'm going to start with the Phil Collins. I need this thing, uh, this shaker. And I'm going to pour in. This is the one I'm going to start a half of. Now, the reason I'm starting with this particular whiskey is because this one's being released as early as tomorrow. So you heard it here first. Um, I'm going to show you what this is. 28.43 Muscle Toned Heft and Punch. Let me hold that up so you can see it. Probably around the wrong way. Um, that's okay. I'm not sure if it is actually. It's around, around the wrong way on my camera, but it might be right on yours. And I think that's right. I think that's right. 
Oh no, it's around the right way. Look at that. 28.43. Yes, I know I need to shave. Thanks for mentioning that, Rowan. Um, fifth, Feb 15th is Phil Collins Day. Ah, oh, well, look, you know, let's happy Phil Collins Day. We're, we're a couple of months late. You know what? That's all the matter. But Matt isn't closed. I'm right here. I'm making terrible cocktails. No, I'm, the whole idea of tonight, just to reiterate, is about using great ingredients with what you've got at home to create something interesting, to spice it up a bit, because we're all going through times where we can't be at a great bar drinking a great cocktail. So why not use single cask whiskey to create a great cocktail? Here we go. This is a full sherry maturation, first fill sherry, 11-year-old deep rich and dried fruits whiskey. This one's coming out tomorrow. So I wanted to actually preview this in a cocktail first. I'll do a full stream on it though, um, probably tomorrow. I've got a special guest tomorrow, but I'll, I'll talk more about this whiskey at another time. So I need, what do I need of this? I need, a, uh, I need one nip of this. Um, so I'm gonna put 30 mils of this. I'll put 30 mils of this whiskey. Oh, how good is just deep sherried whiskey? Look at the color on that, delicious. I'll pop that in here. Uh, I'm also gonna pop in, I need, uh, I need uh, ah, here we go, lemon juice. One comes in a bag. You can squeeze, your, you can squeeze it fresh, of course, probably preferable. I'm gonna put in, I need, it smells like lemon juice. I need 10 mils of that. I need, oh, here we go. I need 10 of grenadine syrup. You can write this down or you can watch the video later. I need 10 of grenadine. You can tell I don't know, really know what I'm doing. Uh, it was quite funny me bartending at Archie Rose. That, all the bartenders uh, have, a good, have had a good time watching me trying to um, create uh, cocktails unsuccessfully. Um, and then we're going to put some ice in. Now I don't have a proper ice pick or pour or anything, so I'm going to grab some ice. I should, probably should have put the ice in first. Doesn't matter. You know what? Uh, and then I'm going to shake. Cal, let's do it. I'm up. I'm keen. Here we go. Now I'm going to get my glass. Now for this one, for the for this one, it's a kind of a it's a long, it's kind of a long drink. So I'm going to grab a glass that here with a long glass. That looks good. Pop some ice in that. Here we go. Okay. So we're going to get our glass, our shaken cocktail. You can tell I don't know what I'm doing. Put the strainer in. Uh, I hope I'm doing this right. I didn't even check the, the, you know what? It sounds like fun. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pour the strain that over that. Oh, look at that. That looks the goods. Now there's one other ingredient still to go. Actually two ingredients still to go. Look at that. Okay. Now what we need is a garnish. Bear with me, bear with me. It says lemon peel for this one. Oh, that wasn't very good, was it? This peeler is not, mm. Not quality. There we go. Bit of balance in that one there. Throw that garnish there and top with soda. Probably just give it a mild stir after that. Look at that. You know what? That's not half bad for a, uh, a total amateur hour. Here we go. I know I've already put the garnish in, so I probably shouldn't stir with the garnish in, but it doesn't matter. Ladies and gentlemen, I've made a Phil Collins in a Hibiki glass. Uh, I'm going to have a taste of that now. That's not half bad. It's quite potent on the whiskey front, on the sherried whiskey front. The recipe calls for bourbon or it calls for a sweet whiskey, it says. So I went with a, a sherried cast whiskey. What do you reckon? Chow train, let's, let's make drinks together. You know what? Let's. I'm really keen to do that, Chow. I really want to do that. It'd be amazing. Uh, shake and keep it sexy. Tipsy button. <laughs> I'll take two, barman. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I've just joined. This looks hectic. It does look hectic. For those who've just joined, uh, we're doing a live stream tonight, which is called Cocktail Crash Test, which is where I'm taking society ingredients like 28.43 being released this week. It's a full sherry maturation from Distillery 28, 11 year old called Muscle Toned Heft and Punch. It does have heft and punch, that one for sure. Uh, I've already lost the cork. Oh, there we go. Um, it's a full sherry whiskey that I've shaken into a uh, Phil Collins a cocktail called the Phil Collins. So cheers to you all out there. That's actually really nice. It's a very, um, it's got a lovely tartness to it. It's got a lovely, uh, the syrupiness is, is, is lovely. The sherry cask is 
bounding through the middle, being cast strength, and it normally calls a 40% ABV whiskey. But I still like to be able to taste the, the, the whiskey in that, in, in a cocktail sometimes. So that actually works quite nice. You know what? Not bad at all. Uh, yeah, Nico, I'm going to call this the Susudio version of... Um, <laughs> there, the Susudio version of the Phil Collins. And um, it was one of the worst peelings of a lemon garnish you've ever seen. That goes down nicely in that, of course. That's quite nice. Okay, I'm going to put that there. I think I'm going to take some questions and then go on to cocktail number two. It's like you have an invisible touch. <laughs> For those who missed the bar kit part of this episode, I've got a peeler, I've got a stirrer, I've got a sharp knife. Uh, I should have used that instead of the, the peeler, really. Um, live and learn. I've got a shaker with some uh, dead ice in it. Got some glassware, lemon juice, soda water, grenadine, simple syrup, bitters, tonic. I've got all the stuff here. It's not the best of everything, everything, but it, it is, it's some interesting... That's interesting flavors and interesting cocktail that we'll make out of it. Why not? Okay. So, uh, the idea behind this, as I said to begin with, is to try interesting ingredients in your cocktails. All too often I see uh, people making whiskey cocktails or gin cocktails or whatever, and they're too afraid to put great spirit into it because obviously great spirit does cost good money. I understand that. But you wouldn't put, you wouldn't have this amazing vegetables and amazing potatoes and, and vegetables. Um, on a plate and then you know if you're making a really nice dinner you wouldn't want to just put a cheap bit of rump steak on there you'd want a nice cut of wagyu so that's the whole idea it's it's the sum of the parts it's the best of ingredients that you can you've got on hand we can't go out to great bars and restaurants and drink great cocktails right now but what we can do instead is actually make great um cocktails at home experiment a bit have a bit of fun with it that's a lovely long cocktail look at the color on it. it's all like rubyish and and delicious it's it, it's just and it's actually really fantastically tasty it's a, it's got that lovely tartness the, the cast profile the sherry note you know what i would very happily order something like that at a bar why not so you know what the good recipe needs good ingredients says martin eber couldn't agree more mate that's what tonight's about is working with the ingredients that you've got on hand to create something interesting, something a bit different. And I've, I've known the Phil Collins cocktail. I've never made one myself. So you've seen it here first. What can I use instead? Um, <laughs> I don't have a sharp knife. Chow says, what can I use? It? Uh, you could use, um, you got a pocket knife. You got a Leatherman. Uh, <laughs> use your teeth. <laughs> I don't know. How sharp are your teeth? Okay. I definitely need this, um, this cocktail shaker back. So I'm going to empty that out. And we're going to go for round two. Now, normally I'd give that a rinse, but I'm working with a dry bar here. I do not have a tap in the office and I don't want to leave you. So uh, I've emptied that out. I've given that a, I haven't given it a rinse. I could give it a rinse. Just give it a quick soda rinse there. Um, so what we're working with is the ingredients that we have on hand to create your own home cocktails. And why not try single cask whiskey in your cocktails why not okay here here we are use good booze my cocktail catchphrase exactly you know what you see these um uh, here's here's an experiment for you try making a society cocktail using a nice society single cask whiskey post it up on facebook maybe don't even put it in the society facebook group you can if you want put it in that group but put it in a different whiskey group see what happens you'll get chastised you'll get uh, you'll get torn apart sometimes by people saying, oh, you'd never mix in great whiskey with great cocktail into a cocktail. It's uh, what a waste. It's, is it really? I mean, it's your, it's your drink to begin with. So you drink it how you want to drink it. And second of all, uh, best ingredients make the best cocktails. It's as simple as that. And, I, and I'm going to preface it by saying again, I am not a bartender. I am not a mixologist. I am a whiskey enthusiast and ambassador. And I am uh, I'm not great at making cocktails. I think I'm pretty good, but I'm not, I'm, I'm not trained in it. I'm, I don't work full time as a bartender and I am, and I'm going to make that perfectly clear, but I enjoy it. It's, it's, it's fun to just experiment with flavors. That's what it's about. I love experimenting with flavors. That's what we do at the society is we're experimenting, pairing things, boiler maker nights, dinners, everything we've done in the past has led to, to, you know, us creating the scene in whiskey as we know it a lot in Australia today and around the world. It was great talking about that kind of point with Dave yesterday. For those who missed it, we talked uh, a live stream last night, which is now up on our YouTube page. Uh, 
called uh, just a live chat with Dave Withers, the master distiller from Archie Rose. We talked about his rye win, but we talked about some of the historical context of what the society meant to him. He's been a member for more than a decade. So it's been amazing to see. How does the whiskey taste by itself? Nick, that's a really good question. I'll pour a little bit out, actually. You know what? I've got a little, I do have a little copper to here. And I'll tell you a bit more about that whiskey. We've got time. We've got time. Just, just a wee drop there. Um, so this is 28.43. It's a heavily sherried whiskey from a distillery we don't see much of, Distillery 28. Uh, so muscle-toned heft and punch. It says on the front, and I completely agree with this, raisins and molasses cake from Madeira, cinder toffee, espresso notes, dried figs, dark chocolate, coconut and oak. A great after-dinner dram. I did just have dinner about 30 minutes ago, so this is a great after-dinner dram. I still prefer my whiskey neat. I'll, just, I'll tell you that right now. If I'm drinking a good single cask, I know I prefer it neat, but it, the sum of the parts of creating an interesting cocktail with it can be enlightening and can be a discovery process of flavor. Why not? Mm, Ripper, look at this. Uh, scotch and soda, please. No ice, no soda. <laughs> Zero, I know what you mean. <laughs> uh, any chance of a distillery R7 daiquiri? Haven't seen R7 for a little while. Dave was drinking an R7.2 last night. Uh, we might see some R7s in the future. There is some more rum coming through, actually, from two really fascinating distilleries. Uh, R11, we've got some more R11 coming through, which is, of course, Worthy Park. Great, uh, great Jamaican rum. Usually underrated. In fact, that's my next cocktail. What are the, what are the odds? Um, but the, um, we also have another code coming through, which is also very exciting, a code we've not seen for a long time in the rum world. So more of that to come. Uh, you know what? There's so many great casks coming down the pipeline that I'm really looking forward to sharing with you all, including uh, some releases we're putting online tomorrow uh, and also some, uh, yeah, some obviously working towards our mid-month release of Beachcomber. I'll do a preview session on that shortly. Uh, that'll be next, I think next Wednesday, the 15th or something is when Beachcomber comes out. Uh, I'll let you know more about that. Uh, but last, yeah, the, the question from... Um, Liam says, uh, when was the last 28 we saw? We haven't seen one of those in the last few years. Really good point. We haven't. We don't see too many 28s. It's, uh, I've actually visited the distillery. Talabadeen is an amazing distillery to tour. I will be completely honest. Their core range doesn't leave me wanting more, but um, uh, uh, leaves me wanting. Whatever the phrase is, not overly enamored with it. Um, I'm, I'm more impressed with the, how, uh, how good a single cask can be out of that distillery, however. And I've tasted some amazing single casks out of that distillery. I think this one is up there with one of the better ones. It's truly like it's it's a muscular sherried whiskey. It's a it's a it's quite a belter. Yeah. Muscle toned heft and punch is a really good name for it. You can tell it's just it's got so much like muscle toned heft and punch for for lack of a better phrase. Um, but we haven't seen too many 28s. But like I said, it's an amazing distillery to visit if you get the chance after travel restrictions or whatever. It's a great distillery to visit uh, only because they've got, it's got so much, um, it, it's such a crazy operation. It's so spread out, yet it's all in one room at the same time. It's really strange. It's the only distillery I can think of in Scotland where uh, all the, like the, the mashing, the malting, the fermenting and the distilling and the filling, I think. No, not so much the filling, but all happen in one room. Uh, which is very uncommon for a distillery uh, these days. They're all, you know, often compartmentalized rooms that you have to walk between, either get a ladder between them or a different room or something, and there's a pipe that leads to it or whatever. Uh, this is all in one room. It's very, it's, it feels like it's one of those distilleries that has, has, uh, has outgrown itself in some ways. But anyway, let's move on to uh, cocktail number two. Now, this is exciting because I'm making a rum cocktail, and I love rum cocktails. I love whiskey neat, but I love rum cocktails, I'm going to be honest. So, um, it's all very, it's all personal preference, whatever you prefer. Now, oh, I need to give that a rinse as well. It's got, it's got some gunk in it. Here we go. The soda water. I don't have a wet bar, so I'm sorry. I'm just working with what I've got. That was some grenadine flavored soda water just then. The ABV, sorry, yeah, uh, Joey, the ABV on that 28.43 is 59.6%, 11 years old, first fill sherry, full maturation. Uh, lovely stuff. Um, big sherry about that one. Big sherried flavors. If you've liked your things like your 63s before, 
things like 63s, those heavy sherry Glintockers we've seen in the past, that kind of realm of sherry, uh, you'll like that one. I think you'll really like that one. Let's move on to cocktail number two. I'm going to let that sit. It's getting better. It's getting sweeter. Lovely. Integrating nicely. Uh, Society whiskey is gunk now. <laughs> gunk? <laughs> I don't think so. Um, uh, SMWS Cuba Libre. Uh, yeah, I could do it. No, no. Well, I'm, tonight I'm making a Jamaican sour because I've got Jamaican whiskey, so I thought that was appropriate. Um, so what we're going to do is, this is even easier to make, I think. Uh, I'm going to make a full-size one of this and I've got a tumbler for the occasion. So I'm going to put the ice in first this time. I think I learned my lesson last time. Here we go. This table. Okay, I've got some ice in there for shaking. Okay, so I need, what do I need? Uh, I need dark rum. So I'm going to use the, um, I'm going to use the Worthy Park. R11.6 came out a while ago. So this one is not a new release, I'm sorry. Just add sunshine. It's an overproof R11.6. Lovely stuff. 66.2% ABV. So nothing to be sneezed at. Here we go. So I'm going to put this in um, the price, uh, Australian allocation size and price on that 28.43 coming out tomorrow. Off the top of my head, I think there's 22 or 24 bottles available tomorrow. So a nice little stash. Um, it did get a feature at our last in-person event in Wollongong. So I think six bottles may have sold there or eight bottles may have sold there or something. So it's, uh, we did get 30 with the allocation in Australia for those who want to know. Uh, it is fir full first fill Oloroso uh, and the price on it on the 11 year old, I think is 220, I think 220 or 210. I'll, I'll have to check. Sorry. Oh, it's not in front of me right Pardon me. Not in front of me right now, but around 200 something, $200 or somewhere around there. It, it's, which I think is pretty reasonable for a, a first deal shared single cask these days. I think um, it's a heavy hit now, 66.2% rum using a single cask, cast strength rum for this. Um, so I'm going to put in, I'm going to make the full size cocktail for this one. Well, almost full size because it's a very high proof rum. So I don't think it's going to need uh, all of what I'm putting in. I'm going to do one and a half um, of that. Pop that there. Oh, even that just alone, that rum smells fantastic. Okay, so I need a, a very small amount, it says. It says a, a teaspoon of grenadines. So I'm going to start with, here we go. Pop this, just, I'm going to use my teaspoon here. So it doesn't need much. Clearly, just a teaspoon, less than a, less than a dram. And it needs a full ounce of lemon juice. Full ounce, who am I? Here we go, full ounce of lemon juice. Okay, now I'm gonna shake that one up now, here we go. Shaky time. Okay, Ooh. this uh, cocktail shaker was very generously gifted to me along with the strainer uh, from Uber, uh, Uber Bar Tools. Great, great mob uh, for winning an award last year. That was great. Okay, all it says is get some ice in that. My very unceremonious way of doing it. I am definitely making a mess. Here we go. Ice, glass, strain. Yeah, it's, and it does, doesn't actually mention the garnish, but I'm going to put the garnish. I'm going to do a lemon garnish for this one as well. Probably do a lemon garnish this time. Here we go. That's a proper garnish. Okay, now I'm going to pop this strainer in and see how this looks. Oh, there we go. Look at this. Hell yeah. Here we go. Who said I couldn't do it? So I'm gonna pop that there. There we go, look at that. That looks, that, uh, that looks the goods, doesn't it? I'm gonna hold that up so you can see it. Uh, nice clear glass of the, um, of the heavily shaken Jamaica sour. So cheerio. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's so good. And I'm glad I didn't actually use any more rum. That's very rummy, it's very sweet. Oh, look at that. 
Noise get kicks out on that mic when you shake. <laughs> so it should. I've got the level quite high, actually. Probably don't need it that high. So um, there we go. You know what? You've seen some action tonight. You've seen two interesting cocktails. And that's the whole idea is to make something interesting within your own home, something interesting you can make at home in these isolating times. Pull out what you've got. If anyone wants the list of the ingredients I used, I'm happy to post it along with the video. And you know what? That's that's actually, I think I have these two. If I was doing a side by side comparing them, I like the Tom Collins. I think I would have that on a nice warm, warm afternoon, like a warm Sunday afternoon, kind of in the sun. That would be ideal. However, for me right now, on this slightly cooler evening, which is where the jacket is coming. I didn't even show you a look at this whiskey with character t-shirt. It was a campaign that we ran uh, last year. Last year. Yeah, last year. Last year. Whiskey with character. And uh, it had a t-shirt. So um, there we go. There's my, um, I'm going to show that from above without spilling it on my keyboard. Look at that. So uh, you can make interesting drinks within the comfort of your home, own home using interesting ingredients. There's all sorts of things you can make in substitutions. I think if I was to do a, um, which one wins sort of comparison here? I'm going to go with the, uh, the Jamaica Sour. Oh, Blitz. That's Blitz. That's fantastic. Really appreciate you tuning in. Every single night we're going live at the moment to our Facebook group, to Facebook page, to our YouTube channel, wherever you wish, wish to um, tune in. Uh, I'll be mostly taking questions from the group, however, because I can't always see all three streams at once. Uh, but uh, if you want to tune in there, that'd be great. Uh, and have a, have a chat with us, have a chat with me. Sometimes it might be Andrew. Sometimes it's me. Sometimes we, we mix things up and change it around. But this week's schedules on our Facebook page at the moment, we had um, Monday and Tuesday already been, of course, which were fantastic. Wednesday is tonight, which is about making single cast cocktails and, and interesting things within the ingredients of your own home. And then of course is the, um, Tomorrow night, I have a special guest, which is yet to be announced. And uh, she will be joining me at, I think, 7 p.m. live. Yeah, 7 p.m. live tomorrow, uh, which will be, again, on here. And then Friday night, it's going to be Friday drinks and Q&A. Just a good old-fashioned uh, Instagram session on, fr on Friday night. So I really appreciate you all tuning in, being a part of the discussion, having a, lot, having a chat, and watching me um, not completely destroy two cocktails, which is great. And you know what? I'm happy to put the ingredients list up online if you want, and we can all learn a few thing or two from it after as well. Have fun with your drinks. Have fun at home. Chow, hit me up, and I'll, I'll catch you all tomorrow night. Thanks so much. Cheers, and I'll see you soon.